your number one most important wealth building tool toward financial success. Chris McIntyre will talk about it today on your game plan for retirement. If you have questions, concerns, if you are looking for planning for your financial investment and retirement future, McIntyre Retirement Services is the resource for Northwestern Ohio. Chris McIntyre here with us providing the guidance, the insight. Always appreciate that, Chris. And just to get right to it, income is the number one most important factor in determining our path progress to financial success. Yeah, without question, Peter, you know, uh, the number one concern for the retirees is running out of money. Uh, you know, and you and I've done the show here for many years and, you know, running out of money is one thing, you know, we're all right. I don't have any more money in my 401k, for example, running out of income is another thing, right? Because you could still have your pension, your social security. If you've done your own annuity, you still have the income coming in as well. So, you know, I would say the number one concern for most folks is running out of income, basically. You know, we we will be talking more about it today, how to utilize it effectively during your working career, how to plan to maximize and optimize your income and, and do so in a sustainable way into and throughout retirement. We'll also be talking about debt and credit and budgeting and spending. So all that goes into the foundation of your financial success. And Chris, a, a lot of people feel like they are fairly confident with their income, like they've got control over their money. And that's generally what determines it. And, and then other times we feel like maybe we are controlled by it and that it is running our lives. The, the difference is really in the equation and the balance between the income and the spending, the budgeting process, which a lot of us tend to ignore. Yeah. And, and our, our uh, got to throw our government under the bus. We can't do what they do and spend trillions that we don't have. We all have to live by a budget basically. And you know, as, as you know, I'm just turned 59 years old, and you know, and you start thinking more and more about, all right, you know what, you know, you, you understand what people deal with as you get older, right? Because you're getting older along with them and, you know, things you didn't worry about, uh, you know, aging parents and whatnot. So, you know, but understanding saying, all right, you know, you know, somebody may make $200,000 a year, and then they retire, and all of a sudden, they're, you know, they're living off of their social security, for example, and maybe making a, a withdrawal on their 401k. But, you know, so let's say they're pulling $30,000 out of their, out of social security. Okay? Chances are they're not going to take 170,000 out of their IRA, right? They probably don't have that kind of dollars in there to, su to sustain that. So, you know, there is a reality check of saying, all right, I need to go from you know, paychecks to playchecks, like our friend Tom Hegna would say. And, you know, in, in that emotion that, that you deal with, with when all of a sudden the income is cut off, it, it's a, certainly a gut check for millions of retirees every year. Well, you've got to plan the retirement income carefully. You've got to maximize the social security. There is an order of operations. There is a way to optimize the withdrawals that you make from your retirement and investment accounts. So we'll talk about all of that process and getting the plan mapped out and in writing today with Chris McIntyre on your game plan for retirement. But of course, if you've got questions or if you'd like to take advantage of that complimentary retirement planning review and strategy session, pick up the phone and give a call 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. 800-868-1194 is the number to call. Uh, Chris, it is really having that paycheck that gives us the ability. It's the tool to make financial progress during our working career. And most people uh, when given the choice or option, opt for the consistency of the paycheck. Well, certainly life can get disrupted if we do not have consistency with that paycheck. Yeah, we have no question, Peter. And, you know, we have hundreds of clients that we create income portfolios for. And, you know, you know the reliability and the steadiness of income is certainly provide some peace of mind for millions of Americans. And, you know, I think a, probably a good example would be, you know, you take your teachers, for example, right? Teachers have typically nice pensions, you know, at least here in the state of Ohio, right? They have pretty good pensions if they put their time and uh, years of service in. And, but they might not have a big fat million dollar 403B, for example, because they're funding a pension, okay? And, you know, so for them, that transition into living off of that budget is probably easier than somebody that said, hey, I'm going to take a lump sum of my pension that I was offered 
and I'm going to create an investment portfolio because look, we get the uh, the ups and downs of the stock market, you know. Uh, and then what we do is help people say, look, here's some other alternatives we can look at. You know, we can take this lump sum pension payment. You know, we can get you a good, safe and secure annuity with a guaranteed income that you can choose to take, you know, immediately or several years down the road. Again, many different sizes, shapes and sizes there. But in our practice, we typically are going to use, not typically, we are going to use an annuity that is safe and secure backed by the claims paying ability of the insurance company, obviously, but that is not subject to negative movements because of the stock market like a variable annuity would be. We choose not to utilize those. Yeah, Chris, uh, teachers famously, notoriously, justifiably uh, talk about being underpaid. And, and I completely agree. They're, they're literally taking their lives in their hands in the classrooms these days, and then oftentimes coming out of their own pocket to buy simple classroom supplies. I don't believe that to be right, but there is something to be said for retiring from a career and then continuing to get paid. Having that pension, right, is not just the, the income during the career that we're talking about. It is the income thereafter and during retirement that a lot of us have to go out and recreate privately. We have to try to replicate the security and the confidence that a pension brings on our own these days, because it's not that we don't need an income the day after we retire. It's that we don't have an income the day after we retire. We don't have that paycheck or pension. And, and you know, social security is a piece of it, but only a piece. So that is really what you're talking about here in helping clients to map this out and to create that kind of consistency, dependable, pension-like stream of income, trying to replicate that quality into and throughout retirement. Sure. And, you know, and things have changed so much now that, you know, the, the Congress has, you know, made legislative changes to allow people to fund their own annuities inside their 401k. That's what, that's how extreme this concern is, is that for millions of baby boomers that haven't saved, you know, and, and done enough investing, uh, of saving for the retirement that retire that investors and employers working right now or employees I'm sorry working right now you know have the ability in certain plans to fund a pe their own pension inside their 401k plan that's how huge this concern is and you know it's the law of unintended consequences uh what was his name Herbert Whitehouse he was the gentleman that I think created the 401k for one of the big fortune 500 companies it's Early in the morning, I can't think of a, a of the company he worked for, but his goal was, you know, look, let's create this additional savings vehicle for our employees, and it will supplement their pension. And then as time went on, the corporate accountant said, well, geez, let's just put money in their 401k and stop funding the pension and look at what we can do for our uh, the books of the fur of the corporation. So, you know, sometimes the law of unintended consequences can, can sting a bit. Yeah. And, and, and Chris, I mean, when an employee does capture a match that's available, right. Is that the burden on the company probably is about the same. They were putting a little money away, except they were doing it for all employees. And for the most part, now we only capture that match if the company offers it. And if we put some skin in the game, it really has put, more of the onus and the responsibility for saving reti for retirement on our own individual shoulders. Make sure that if that match is available, at the very least, we are capturing that to try to replicate what the pension once offered. Yeah, yeah, without question. And, you know, and, you know, as we create income portfolios using interest off of bonds or notes and CDs, uh, you know, the annuity side of things there, dividend paying stocks, as interest rates have come up, then we've been able to generate more income. Okay? The downside to that is the inflation was the driver of that. So, you know, is a four and a half percent CD keeping pace with the with the rate of inflation? And I think we would all agree, I'd rather make four and a half percent now than zero percent like we had forever, you know, for basically 10 years. But uh you but know. but I'd rather have the zero percent inflation than the nine percent inflation, and and in uh, the 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 scale here has these higher have these higher interest rates even kept up 
uh, even though they are more generous and advantageous. But Chris, I mean, that being said, if we are looking to create an income portfolio, if we are looking to create a cash flow in retirement, really now is as good a time to be looking at this and to try to structure that portfolio as we have ever seen, or certainly in the last 15 to 20 years, now is the time to structure that income plan for retirement. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, what I like to do within our practice or our, we'll call it our little niche is, you know, if somebody is, is getting ready to draw income out in the next, I'd just say six to 12 months to paint with a broad brush here is, you know, let's get, let's create the income portfolio. And if we're using investments like dividend paying stocks and bonds, the traditional stock bond piece there um, is, you know, let's start building some cash out of that. Let's start putting those dividends into like a money market account or something. So we've got a cash bucket that we can start withdrawing money out of and then continually have those, those dividends and that interest, uh, you know, pay into that money market type account there so that, that there's always a cushion in there that we have enough dollars to pay out on a monthly basis. And, you know, the stock market and the bond market goes up and down, but it's the reliability of the dividends and the interest that are what's important. And now, I, you know, they have to sometimes jump up on my soapbox and, and preach that out to clients like, yep, the price of stocks may have gone down on your dividend portfolio, but the dividends are still the same. Yeah, it's a, it, it is a, a piece of an income portfolio, but generally, Chris, that, that is not what should sustain. That should not be the, the foundational piece of the income portfolio. It is a supplement or complement. It, it works in tandem with other pieces, correct? That is absolutely correct, Peter. Bring up a good point there. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit back on that inflation piece there because you brought up a good point, you know. You know, in, the rate of inflation is slowing down, but it's not like we reversed the 9%. That's still there. You know, everything went up 9%, 4%, you know, for several years. And we're still, you know, we still have to pay all those additional costs. They're still there, even though the, the rate of the increase is coming down. That's all. Yep. Well, Chris, on the other side of this, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, before I, I get to that, uh, again, now is the time. Now is as good a time as we have seen in maybe the better part of the last two decades to look at the cash flow producing power of your portfolio, to look at income planting, to structure that written retirement income and distribution plan. And if you would like to sit down with an experienced, qualified professional with a trained eye, access to all the tools to help you identify the best ones for your goals, your timeline, your risk tolerance, help you optimize the portfolio, pick up the phone, give McIntyre Retirement Services and Chris McIntyre a call, 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. 1194. But there are two sides to this, right, Chris? They're, they're number one is the paycheck, the income, the income plan, the distributions, the withdrawals and cash flows that we can create. On the other side, and maybe something that we could control a little bit more, but we tend not to, is the spending and the budgeting and how much is actually going out. The outflow, the, 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 the expenses that we have, some of them are, are going to be requirements, right? Subsistence. But we tend to have this lifestyle component in our budget that is rather expensive as well. And I know that you deal with a lot of people that whether you want to call it lucky or hardworking or blessed have, have been in a situation where they have not had to necessarily pinch every penny and stretch every dollar quite as much during their working career. But for that same description of individual, Chris, isn't the lifestyle that they are accustomed to generally that much more expensive and therefore the shift when they walk away from the paycheck that much more significant? Yeah, yeah, without question. We'll kind of call that the wants and the needs uh, sometimes have to be revisited. You know, the, the wife wants to go on vacation and the husband says, well, you know, I need a new car, you know, or a truck, you know, <laughs> let's, let's, let's be the stereotypical piece. Sounds so, like two different wants there in, in reality. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> You know, and that's where you have to, you know, balance that out. And, you know, we've talked about before, look, you know, the markets have done well. They've recovered since 2022 and, you know, clients have significant gains in their account. So, you know, is this a good time to say, hey, you know, we've done well. We've got some extra cash here in the investment side. Can we pull a little bit off and take the trip that we always wanted to? You know, yeah, you certainly make that rationalization. That's a better time to do it than, well, the market's down 20%. You know, should we hold off on a, 
$20,000 overseas trip or something like that that you wanted to take. So, I mean, that's where you have to have some of that flexibility in there. And, you know, it doesn't have to be a vacation. Maybe that's when you buy your car or you accelerate payments on your mortgage to bring the loan down if you wanted to. But Chris, part of your 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 service for clients is making sure that they've got the ability to spend, right? And And when somebody comes in and they says, well, they say, I think I spend close to $5,000 a month or whatever the number is. Um, you have to be aiming for the right target in order to hit the mark, right? Is you, you really have to dig in and have a better understanding. So do you encourage people to review and examine and evaluate the budget as they are planning for the transition and, 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 and ramping up toward retirement? Yeah. Yeah. Without question. It's, nice to be able to do some pre-retirement planning for, uh, you know, because then you can start building in the contingencies ahead of time if you want to create, you know, what we call a safe money strategy that may include an income element in it as well uh, to, and give you a buffer from, you know, stock and mark, stock and bond market type volatility and say, all right, well, boy, I'm glad, you know, that we created this strategy ahead of time you know, versus after the fact, if you will. And, you know, now's the time we're kind of revisiting some of that with our clients as well saying, okay, hey, you know, we've recovered coming out of the 2022 side of things here. Maybe we want to create and look at the in, uh, at a safe strategy now that we've recovered some of the, uh, uh, some of the value from the volatile 2020, uh, 20 year of 2022. Sorry. No, <laughs> no, it was, it was a, a rough year, 2022. And, and now it's it, more than a year past, but that was historically one of the worst years for asset allocation and the bond market in particular, and what was considered to be the safer, more conservative side of the portfolio actually had one of the worst years on record. Chris, that's kind of a shock to the system for the person nearing retirement who thought that they had uh, a balanced allocation or maybe was using one of those target date funds. Yeah, without question, you know, and when you deal with a lot of retirees, you know, they've got a a bond component typically is a majority side of the portfolio there. And then you have to explain to them, say, you know, part of this is just an interest rate cycle and it'll come back on the other side of it. And, you know, right. I think we're probably through the interest rate increases and we're all waiting for the interest rates to be cut, which would bode well for bond prices going forward as well. And they've had a, you know, pretty significant recovery, uh, in through 2023, essentially, especially the last half of 2023, when they announced uh, that they're probably going to do a wait and see, and then maybe eventually cut interest rates. That's good for income producing asset classes like dividend stocks. That's good for, you know, bonds that pay interest, you know, because the, the reason that is, is if they lower interest rates, and let's say they lower them by 1%, for example, okay, well, any bond out there that is paying more than the current interest rate becomes worth more money because it's paying a higher rate. So on paper, it looks like if you sold it, you'd get more money out of it versus the other way around when new bonds are paying more interest than old bonds. Yep. And and speaking of those interest rates, we we do expect that rates will be cut. But Chris, the Fed has recently come around and said it, it may not be as soon or as fast as what was originally forecast, right? Yeah, that is correct. And, you know, look, everybody who's waiting for the recession to hit in 2022 after 11 interest rate increases, it hasn't hit. You know, we're into 2024 now. So all of the, you know, the naysayers and, you know, I mean, they're not necessarily naysayers. Everybody uh, essentially thought we would have a pretty significant pullback in the economy. We did not have that. Now we're all thinking, hey, they're going to cut interest rates starting in March. Well, you know, we're well into April right now and they haven't happened yet. So, you know, uh, what they say and what they do can sometimes be two different things. And that's why predicting, you know, portfolio performances is so very difficult to do because there's so many variables out there. That's why it's important to build that portfolio around income or around growth. And, you know, so you can ride through the volatile times that are naturally going to occur in, in investment performance. Well, again, we are talking with Chris McIntyre, Northwestern Ohio's resource for that a, a common sense approach to planning to optimize your financial future. And he's got access to all the tools and he, he will help you to put a written game plan for retirement together. All you got to do to take advantage, to take 
to take that opportunity, pick up the phone and give a call. 800-868-1194. That's 800-868-1194. 800-868-1194. Uh, Chris, going back to the spending side of things, I know a lot of people don't like the terminology budget. It feels very limiting, very confining. So as you are helping to define the, the retirement plan and projections, as you are aiming for that target for what your client needs to spend, you're talking more about a spending plan. Uh, uh, some guardrails there so that they know what they can spend, that they can enjoy themselves in retirement, that they can do things, but also that they're not overspending and risking running out of money in later years, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and it's it's critical now because today's retirees are very active living people. They're not necessarily going to want to shut down and sit on the proverbial rocking chair on the front porch. You know, they're wanting to spend winters down south in different climates, go see uh, family members, do some travel, much more active than, you know, what we kind of grew up thinking the traditional retirement was, um, you know, where you, you had your pension, your social security, and you live like you normally, you know, kind of like you went to work every single day. Uh, much different these days here with people wanting to be active. And I'll say it this way, Peter, you know, and you, and you, you realize this as well yourself and what you do is, you know, People want to spend more money in the early part of retirement while they have good health. And we encourage that as well, too, because, you know, we've been in the business so long that, uh, you know, some of the wisdom of gray hairs tells us that, you know, health isn't always guaranteed. And, you know, we try to convey to folks, look, if you want to do something and take a bucket list trip, do it while you're healthy. You know, don't wait and wish you would have done it later. Yep. Well, Chris, you, you mentioned national debt. Uh, earlier in the program. Um, I, I want to talk about how much that plays into planning for our individual retirement. The government seems rather unconcerned at, at, at some level, but I also want to talk about personal debt because while we have been touting that this is maybe the best time to look at uh, cash flow rates, at retirement income planning, at, at the interest that we can get or or the bond yield that we can get from more conservative investments. That is all fantastic, but it also is costing us more if we have any kind of debt. And it's not just the amount that we owe, it's what that requires from our monthly cash flow for the regular payments on those debts. Uh, I guess my question is, is there really such a thing as good debt and bad debt? And what should we be striving for as a retirement goal when it comes to our debt? Yeah, hey, great question there, buddy. You got me thinking on that one. and. You know, let's take the, the good debt, bad debt side. I would say, you know, bad debt's, you know, excessive credit card debt that you're carrying forward. And, you know, and, and even, you know, believe it or not, we deal with a lot of student loans that are out there for older adults as well, you know, and the ridiculous interest rate that they have to pay on that. And, you know, we could probably do a whole show on, you know, on the extortion of student loans. Um, but that's probably more of the bad debt. The good debt might be your mortgage or, you know, if you bought a second home as an investment and you have a mortgage on that, right, that debt, you can deduct the interest on a second home off of your taxes. So, you know, we could look at that a little bit differently. Um, if you're, you know, enabling your children to live a, you know, a, a different kind of lifestyle and you're paying for that, I would call that kind of bad debt. And, you know, um, you know, we call it enabling. That's what it is. Um, and then uh, w the other part of that was what, Peter? Something on the budget you were asking? Yeah, just what should we be striving for as we are working our way toward retirement or in retirement? Should we try to be debt-free completely? Uh, is is having a mortgage today more acceptable than it once was? Yeah, like, you know, my wife and I built a house in 2018, and we have a mortgage on our home yet, and, you know, but it's 3%, you know? So, you know, look, if I've got take that principal amount of money and throw it in the CD making 5%, you know, and I'm paying 3% on my mortgage, I'm 2% ahead of the game. And you could factor taxes and that stuff in there as well. But, you know, those are questions that we deal a lot with, with clients that ask us, should I be accelerating the payments on my, on the mortgage on my house? And a lot of it is, what is the interest rate you're paying? And, you know, hopefully they cut interest rates and some folks that got higher rates now will be able to refinance and it it won't be such a drain on their capital. But that is a big issue that I think we're going to be seeing 
you know, as as we deal with another set of clients that'll be coming up in their mid to late 50s and working their way into retirement with m much higher interest rate mortgages, where we'll probably want to accelerate that payoff quicker than what we had been doing. Well, there's the the math side, and then there's the psych psychological side there yeah. of being debt free and and what that means and not having those mortgage payments as part of the retirement budget versus could we be doing something in in the current environment uh, that gains a little bit more than what the mortgage is costing us so I, I guess we have to crunch those numbers um Congress and the IRS and and government don't seem concerned with the math or the psychology of this 34 35 trillion dollars in debt. Chris, what do we need to know or how do we need to plan to address the fact that government is not addressing this debt? Buddy, I mean, that is that's, you know, there are things that keep me up at night and that is one of them. And, you know, I was just reading and it was on the Bloomberg website the other day talking about all the different debt scenarios that they had been running through with, you know, how, you know, interest rate spikes and so on and so forth. And, you know, it doesn't end well. I mean, it's you don't have to be a genius out here. And, you know, this current administration, I won't name names, but, you know, their budget for 2024 just explodes the deficit continually. And, you know, I mean, they can't do that with their personal finances. How? how why do we let them do that with the country's finances? And, you know, you need to vote those people out. I'm sorry, but that I'm passionate about how insane our national debt is. And, yep. You know, because all of a sudden, you know, how valuable is a U.S. government bond? How valuable is a U.S. dollar if there's nothing behind it? You know, I mean, we're not on the gold standard. All it is is confidence, right? Yeah. That piece of paper that says $100 is the confidence that there's 100 bucks someplace to make that good. It's just a piece of paper. Yeah. Well, Chris, you, you've also often talked about the different categories, the different buckets in which we can place our dollars. And 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 part of the, the choice and option and, and where we elect also uh, will will help to protect us in in some amount against the government overspending and the government debt and the possibility that they might have to raise taxes in the future to to address that. Right. Yeah, that is correct, right? How else does the government raise money? They either cut spending or raise taxes or a combination of the two in, in, in most regard. And I think, uh, you know, or tariffs on foreign uh, companies, things like that. And, you know, they're, they're certainly talking about tax increases and blaming everything on the Trump tax cuts, which exploded the economy and didn't drive up inflation or anything and brought in record revenue, you know? But for some reason, they 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 still get shot down. It's like, you know, sometimes cutting taxes raises revenue because people have more money to spend, which generates more taxes, more people to hire, right? If they cut my taxes, I'd hire more people. Yeah. Okay. Well, the yeah. IRS is the is the highest paid employee at McIntyre Retirement Services is the Internal Revenue Service. Wow, that's a that that that's a statement right there. Um Debt, credit, budgeting, spending, income, all important factors in our financial success, our, our, our well-being, our situation. But income, ladies and gentlemen, is the number one most important factor. It is your most valuable tool in building wealth and preserving it and preserving financial confidence into and throughout retirement. Now is as good a time as we have seen in the last 20 years for looking at how to structure your retirement income. So if you are missing this opportunity, you're missing the boat, you, you need to be waking up and paying attention and, and taking some action to take advantage of the tools, of the rates, of the strategies that we have available today. Chris McIntyre can help you structure that plan. Pick up the phone, give a call, because the day after retirement, you're going to still need an income. Chris McIntyre can show you how to take your 401k, your IRAs, your investments, your retirement assets, and structure that income to optimize it, as well as complementing Social Security. That's what in a written retirement income plan is all about. And he will help you put that together with no cost, no obligation. It is a complimentary service there at McIntyre Retirement Services. 800-868-1194 is the number to call. That's 800-868-1194, 800-868-1194. Or you can always go online, McIntyre Retirement Services. 
Services.com, McIntyre Retirement Services.com. And, and Chris, we always appreciate the time and, and the listeners and viewers do too. Uh, the YouTube channel is blowing up out there with the uh, the shorts, the reels, the tips and and, and uh, short videos that you've put together. So we're, we're enjoying seeing the, the people are enjoying seeing the videos. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Yeah, Jason does a good job helping us put some of that together for sure, buddy. Thanks, everybody. Be safe out there. We always appreciate the time with Chris McIntyre. Again, the number to call. And I encourage you to do so, ladies and gentlemen, to get that retirement plan put together. 800-868-1194. We'll talk to Chris McIntyre next week on Your Game Plan for Retirement. Tune into Chris McIntyre's full radio program and visit McIntyreRetirementServices.com for many additional valuable resources, including other great episodes of Game Plan for Retirement with Chris McIntyre. Be sure to subscribe. The content of this radio show is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. You are encouraged to seek investment, tax, or legal advice from an independent professional advisor. Any investments and or investment strategies mentioned involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. Advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, a registered investment advisor. Fiduciary duty extends solely to investment advisory advice and does not extend to other activities such as insurance or broker-dealer services. Advisory clients are charged a quarterly fee for assets under management while insurance products pay a commission which may result in a conflict of interest regarding compensation.